Good morning, this is Radio Good News. The goal of this program is to draw all people to the love of Jesus Christ. I want everyone to know and experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are key to a Holy Spirit-filled and successful Christian life. I will focus on God's love because God's love is wonderful. I am John Thornton. I will be reading from the Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, because that is God's word to us in our modern English language. Let's start today with Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Those are God's words from Psalm 96. Our musical guest today is Petra. Sometimes the night seems to go on for days When it's hard to see the light Through the darkness and haze While the world around you Makes you feel out of place And the burdens that you carry Are just too hard to face Oh, 
And that was Petra. We'll hear from them again at the end of the program. Stay tuned for that. Turn with me as we continue to look into the Ten Commandments again to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. Neither shall you commit adultery. Neither shall you steal. Neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor. Neither shall you covet your neighbor's wife. Neither shall you desire your neighbor's house or field or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Those are God's words of the Ten Commandments from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. Little Jimmy and his twin sister Jenny were sitting in their Sunday school class. They were talking about the Ten Commandments and were just getting to the commandment to honor your father and your mother. The Sunday school teacher said to the class, Now, do you remember the commandment about families? She hoped that they would remember and say, Honor your father and mother. But little Jimmy and Jenny said in unison, You shall not kill. Indeed, families are very important. God knows that. And right in the middle of the Ten Commandments is the statement, Honor your father and your mother. Remember the list? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And God reinforced this in the New Testament. In Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, we read, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So what happens to families? Well, let's look at a lesson from history. Let us compare Max Jukes and his descendants to Jonathan Edwards and his descendants. Max Jukes lived about the year 1750 in New York. He did not believe in Jesus and he was hostile to spiritual things and religious activities. He refused to let his family attend church. Now he has 1,026 descendants, out of which 300 were sent to prison for an average of 13 years each. 190 of his descendants were public prostitutes. 680 admitted to being alcoholics. The descendants of Max Jukes have cost society over $420,000, and there really was no contribution to society by any of the descendants of Max Jukes. But let us compare to Jonathan Edwards, who lived in the same area and at about the same time. Jonathan Edwards was a great man. He loved Jesus Christ and he loved his children. He strongly encouraged reading the Bible and prayer. 
Jonathan Edwards has 929 descendants, of which 430 were ministers, 86 became university professors, 13 became university presidents, 75 authored books, and the books were evaluated as of fine quality, 7 were elected to the United States Congress, and one descendant became the vice president. The family of Jonathan Edwards has cost society nothing, but has added immeasurably to the good of all. Which family would you rather be part of, Max Jukes or Jonathan Edwards? Your children will either be blessed with you or cursed by you. Which would be better? And this goes back to the commandment, honor your father and your mother. And that is not all, for then God's own finger wrote, so that your days may be long, and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Bible is filled with examples of fathers and mothers. Some are great, but far too many are really rather poor. Consider the example of King David. David was used by God to write wonderful and beautiful psalms, and yet he seems to have fallen short in his role as a dad. And David was married to many different women. He was a serial adulterer as well as a murderer and womanizer. Uh, to truncate a long and complex story, David messed up his family big time. David's firstborn son was Amnon. This son became evil. He became obsessed with lust for his sister Tamar. He then raped her and abused her terribly. David found out about this rape, but he would not take action. He let the evil slide and he failed to protect his daughter, Tamar. Tamar then went to her other brother, Absalom. Absalom protected her for the rest of her days, but bitterness set into the family, especially Absalom, Tamar, and even Amnon. Absalom ended up murdering Amnon and starting a revolution. Absalom's violence came back on his own head as he was murdered in a grotesque fashion. Then David's son, Solomon, came to power. Solomon was very wise, but he too had problems with his family. Indeed, the sins of the father will affect the third and fourth generation of those who sin and reject God's ways. How will your children remember you? Are you someone that can easily be honored? God said, honor your father and your mother. But that is a tough order when parents are not following God's ways. Uh, both of my parents are dead. My mother died in March of 2000, and my dad died in August of 1989. I truly miss them every day. They were fine people. They were not in, in any way at all perfect, but they were good people with loving hearts. My dad had an incredible sense of humor. Dad knew a joke for virtually every circumstance and situation. And about 90% of dad's jokes I cannot tell on the radio or from the pulpit. Now, it's not really that high of a percent. But you know, the ones that I remember best are really rather crude, but very, very funny. My dad was a hard worker. Even when I was in my prime of health, say I was about 20 years old, my dad could work me into the ground. He was a hard worker. But there was a gentle and wise side to my dad. He was one of the most generous men I have ever known. He was one of those rare souls who would go out of his way to help someone, even a stranger. He was more than willing to give people a chance and help them every step of the way. I truly believe that there's nothing that could have stopped my father from helping my mom, my sister, or me. My mom was a very great woman. She was not perfect, but she really knew how to keep things in order. She was organized far more than I ever will be. She was truly gifted in organization. And my mom also knew how to work hard. When mom worked, she worked hard, and I guess she learned that way back when at age six she was tending to her little brother Dale because her own mother had died. My mom and her older sister Agnes managed that whole family while grandpa, their father, worked at the rail yards. Indeed, I miss my parents very badly. They were fine people and I wish that my own daughters could have known them for a longer period of time. As Proverbs 6.20 reminds us, my child, keep your father's commandment and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Do you honor your father and your mother? Are you the kind of father or mother that is easy to honor? 
In a way, my own parents remind me of a couple of biblical characters, Joseph and Naomi. Do you remember Joseph the carpenter from Nazareth? Yes, Joseph is probably the best example in the Bible of a great father. He was a carpenter. My dad was a carpenter. Joseph started off his parenting in a bizarre way. When he was about 19 years old, he was preparing to get married. Then his girlfriend became pregnant, but they had never had sex. It was shocking. It was appalling. It could lead to her death by stoning. For that was the penalty for sex outside of marriage back in that ancient Hebrew culture. But Joseph loved Mary. So he decided not to bring it to the attention of the authorities. He would break up with her quietly. Then the angel came. An angel told Joseph it was a miracle child. Mary had been faithful and she bore the Messiah. A miracle was happening and Joseph was part of that story. And as a good father, Joseph protected his family. They had many adventures as Jesus was born in that stable in Bethlehem. And then they had to flee as international refugees to Africa to escape the murderous rage of King Herod. Through it all, Joseph was a great father. He was the kind of father one can easily honor and respect. How was your dad? Will you obey God and honor your father and your mother? My mom reminds me of Naomi. Do you remember Naomi? Way back during the time of the judges, Naomi lived with her husband and her two sons. She was a righteous and noble woman, but life was rather hard for Naomi. She and her family were forced to look for food because of a terrible famine. So they traveled to a far off place called Moab. There, Naomi's sons, Malan and Chilion, married some local gals named Ruth and Orpah. But then tragedy struck the family. Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died. Not long afterward, her two sons also died. All that was left were Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth. Naomi longed for her homeland and her family. As she headed back to her homeland, she talked to her daughters-in-law. She knew that the way would be hard and that the homeland would not be welcoming toward foreign women. So Naomi told the girls to stay in Moab. Orpah remained there. But Ruth said, oh, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. So they traveled back to the homeland. And the book of Ruth, records all their adventures. Naomi was more than willing to sacrifice her own interests to help her children. And that is the hallmark of an excellent mother. That is how I remember my own mom. How will you honor your father and mother? How will your children honor you? In Ephesians 5.21 we read, Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. So mothers and fathers should be honored equally and society should treat women in honorable and good ways. Now, there once was a time when women could not even vote, but that was wrong. And overcoming that was part of honoring fathers and mothers. As William Jennings Bryan once wrote, the strongest argument in favor of women's suffrage is the mother argument. I love my children as much, I think, as any father can, but I am not in the same class as my wife. I do not put any father in the same class with the mother, in love for the child. If you would know why the mother's love for the child is the sweetest, tenderest, most lasting thing in the world, you will find the explanation in the Bible. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The child is the treasure of the mother. The most pathetic struggle that this earth knows is not between our men upon the battlefield. It is the struggle of a mother to save her child when wicked men set traps for it and lay snares for it. And as long as the ballot is given to those who conspire to rob the home of a child, it is not fair, no one can believe it to be fair, to tie a mother's hands while she is trying to protect her home and save her child. If there is such a thing as justice, surely a mother has a just claim to a voice in shaping the environment that may determine whether her child will realize her hopes or bring her gray hairs in sorrow to the grave. Indeed, way back 70 some years ago, the great man William Jennings Bryan recognized that women needed to be treated fairly by society. How will you honor the fathers and mothers in society? 
Well, you might say something like, Oh, it's easy to honor a good mom or dad, but what about those bad parents? <laughs> and indeed, there are some people who are real losers as parents. I see loser parents all the time. I hear about it from their victims. In Ephesians 6, verse 4, we read, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And in Colossians 3.21, Fathers, do not provoke your children, or they may lose heart. Jesus, our Master and Messiah, was even more blunt about loser parents, people who hurt kids. Jesus said, as recorded in Matthew 18, 6, If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. So how does one honor a loser parent? It all comes down to forgiveness. We each need God's forgiveness for our own sins. And this comes by confessing our sins to Jesus and asking him to forgive us and be our Lord and Savior. Then we can step forward and offer forgiveness to others. All parents need their children's forgiveness. I know that my daughters need to forgive me for the many, many times I have failed them and sinned against them. And each of us needs to forgive our own parents. Yes, offering forgiveness might be the first step you need to take in honoring your father and your mother. Your father and mother may have done evil and vile things to you, but you need to forgive and move on. You will benefit from giving out your forgiveness. Jesus said, as recorded in Luke 6, 37, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. And as we read in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 10, Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. And in John 20, 23, we read, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So if you want to get rid of the pain and haunting memories of loser parents, forgive them. That is a way to honor them so that you can be free from those sins and released from the bitterness that may be eating your heart away. And after forgiving your earthly parents, please know and understand that God will stand in the place of your parents. You do not have to continue to be in an abusive relationship with loser parents. Honoring someone does not mean allowing them to continue to hurt you. You can honor parents by forgiving them and then leave them alone. God loves you and wants to heal your soul and give you peace. In Psalm 146, verse 9, we read, The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. And in Psalm 68, 5, we read, Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. And in Isaiah 66, 13, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Yes, indeed, God will be there for you to replace those parents who may have failed you. Turn to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Master and Messiah, and ask him to help you and guide you in matters concerning your parents. Ask Jesus to give you the power you need to forgive them and then allow you to honor your parents, to live out the commandment. For God can fill that emptiness that you have if you are willing to obey his rules and live within his fences. One of those rules is stated simply, honor your father and your mother. Let's go through the list again. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. You shall not make for yourself an idol. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. Those are wonderful guidelines to help you. So please, no matter who your parents are or what they may have done, you can honor them by giving them forgiveness and focusing on the fact that they were your parents. And that fact alone makes them worthy of honor. So today, 
give your mom and dad a call and thank them for who they are. I'm John Thornton. Thanks for listening to Radio Good News. I encourage you to seek out a church family where you can worship, be encouraged, and honor your father and your mother. For this area offers many fine Bible-believing and teaching churches of various denominations. You can write to me at Radio Good News, P.O. Box 1722, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57101. Thanks for your cards and letters. I appreciate them, and I do read all of them. May you richly know the blessings of the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come again. We'll finish today with Petra. Try